what's going on folks welcome back to the channel so you may be saying what kind of thumbnail was that I'm gonna tell you it's not clickbait I am going to show you how I was able to get 600 horsepower 16 miles to the gallon with two holly carbs stay tuned <laughs> So you might be asking yourself, how in the world did you get 16 miles to the gallon with a tunnel ram and two holly cars? Well, it's not easy, but I can show you detailed ways of going about it and I hope you can get the same results that I did. So follow along. Okay folks, so this is part of my secret to success. Some people may say it's cheating. No, I say it's taking new technology, applying it to old technology so that you can get the best possible result by using those old holly carburetors. You can almost have your cake and eat it too by using this meter. Why do I say that? You can tune your idle circuit. You can tune the transfer slot. You can tune the main circuit and the power circuit all individual and get great results. Okay, so you see me take the meter and blocks off of the uh, holly carb. So what we're going to talk about is the power valve channel restriction, okay? A lot of people think, oh, well, you just change the jets and you're good to go. Well, that's the wrong way to tune a holly carburetor, and I'm going to tell you why. All right, take for instance, I don't know if you can see it but this is a 66 jet main jet right here okay and one of the things about running annular boosters is they run inherently richer compared to uh, down leg boosters and you may ask well, why is that well it's because you're pulling fuel from six holes or six orifices versus just one so the engine is allowing is able to get more fuel from the bowl through the booster itself and thus making it run richer uh, it's not uncommon when you're running annular boosters to have to pull a lot of jet out of the carb just so that you get the air fuel ratio in the right direction but let's talk about power valve channel restrictions Okay, when I'm talking about power valve channel restrictions, I am talking about these two small orifices behind the power valve. So let's say you have your wide band air fuel meter and you're cruising around and you've got this thing running really lean at cruise and you're getting up into the 14s and 15s and the engine is really happy. But when you stab the throttle the power valve will open and then it would get additional fuel to the booster through these two holes so depending on whether you're rich or lean will depend on whether you go up or down in these uh, sizes right here now you can see that I have taken these metering blocks drilled and tapped them to accept little brass uh, 6 30 second uh, set screw okay and you can get those from McCaskar I think that's the name of the company yeah McCaskar McCaskar car yeah and what I do is I will take get some tiny drills I really suggest on getting a, a pin vise and um, 
a drill set like this right here so that you can tailor uh, you can see how it comes with different drills from 13,000 up to 39,000 okay so you may be saying well Andy how far do I go in drilling this well there's a formula and I will post it down below of finding the area of that the size hole in relation to the jet size so when you take this this is a let's see i think this is it yeah that drill fits in there so let's take my micrometer make sure that it's zeroed okay so let's see how big this drill bit is okay we're looking at uh 51,000 almost 52 thousandths right there we'll call that 52. so when you do the math of the combined area of the power valve channel restriction and the size of the jet it should end up somewhere around a 73 to 74 based off of the math that i did but taking in consideration having annular boosters it's a different ball game and it works in relation to your high speed air bleed as well so you've got to get the air bleed correct and one of the ways that you can tell that that is off is like in my case on the dyno the air fuel started out into i think at the beginning of the run it was in the mid to low tens and then it just progressively kept getting richer and richer throughout the rpm range and so that kind of gives you an indication that you need to change your air bleed to try to get that more of a steady state deal so but yeah this is the key to getting power and mileage out of a holly carburetor because like i said 99 percent of the people will just change the jet and call it good because that's the easiest thing to do but like I said in the post, when you do that, you change the entire fuel curve for the main circuit. And when you're in the main circuit, just cruising around town, your fuel economy just went. <laughs> okay, so in changing my channel restrictors out, I went from one that was measuring uh, 52 thousandths or whatever it was to 35 thousandths that is a huge swing in percentage but given how rich this thing is i've got to make a huge change so uh, we'll see if this is going to be in the right direction i know it's going to lean it out but we just got to find out how much another often overlooked attribute of a holly carburetor is the idle feed restriction right here because 90 percent of your time driving around town you're in the transfer slot okay and when you're in the transfer slot you're still taking fuel from the uh, idle circuit okay and so the size of this orifice can determine your fuel economy as well so something to keep in mind there. One of the cool things that's uh, Allstate Carburetor exclusive is the way that they install boosters. Jim and the guys at Allstate have developed a way to install boosters where they actually thread the booster and install, and install this uh, uh, flange nut on here. What they do is they drill the main body countersink it and then they will take and actually screw the booster in place and that is added protection to let you know that that booster is not going to come loose or fall out into your engine one of the many things that i do and it's just for me personally is anytime i take my bowls off and do a jet change or whatever if i have new gaskets i always try to replace them 
I know that the blue gaskets are reusable, but for me, it's just cheap insurance of knowing that uh, I'm getting a good seal. And the reason for that is, if you look at this meter and block gasket, you can see how it leaves an impression in the gasket. And what I've had happen in the past is when I reuse the gasket, say the meter and block gasket's not exactly in the same spot as where it was before, and it'll develop a leak inside here, and then you'll end up with tuning issues that you can't figure out. So just for peace of mind, replace the gasket. And another common leak point is right here where the accelerator pump uh, hole is at leaking into the uh, power valve channel and that will cause all kinds of issues okay so i'm doing the rear carb now and i wanted to bring up another topic you know earlier i told you that when you 90 percent of your cruising around you're actually using the idle circuit in the transition slot and off the idle circuit because that's where the fuel is delivered from so let me give you an interesting problem that i ran into when i was tuning this tunnel rim setup your mileage may vary so i was able to dial in the perfect uh idle air fuel ratio i could get this thing to idle almost into the 15s which for a carbureted engine that is really good and uh you know and that's all in part two with having a good vacuum advance set up here with the adjustable pot but the first thing that i noticed with the wideband is as soon as it would come off of idle and get into the transition slot it would run extremely rich okay and then once you pass through the transition slot and get into the main circuit it would level back out where it needed to be and so i tried forever to figure out a way to uh, tune the transfer slot and i found a, a holly carburetor forum i think it's uh, fuel systems i can't remember the exact name but i can't take credit for what i'm getting ready to show you because it wasn't my idea but it's something that I have found and used and used it to great success ever since I found it. So, anyways, on that forum, I was looking around and I just happened to run across a guy who had similar issues. And they were talking about installing a jet right there because this port on both sides is where the transfer slot uh gets its fuel and it goes down to the metering plate okay so what i did was drill that out tap it for a 10 30 seconds set screw and pretty much i was able to make another circuit inside the carburetor that wasn't there before and so like i said those guys on that forum they had come up with this and let me tell you it works wonders because I would say 80 to 90 percent of your fuel economy comes from having this right here dialed in the transfer slot on a tunnel ram setup is everything because when i'm driving around normally with the truck i can be going almost 80 miles an hour on the interstate and still be in the transition slot i haven't even got into the main circuit yet so, once again, that is something that I would have only been able to find out by having a wide air, a uh, wide fuel, dang, a wide band air fuel meter. So, you know, it has many advantages. It's not just a, a one dimensional tool. Um, what I found is you can dive into the Holly carburetor, and let me tell you, the engineers who designed this carburetor back in the 50s, they were just brilliant. Because if you dive into this thing and tune each circuit individually, 
like David Vizard was telling you, you can make this thing rival any fuel injection setup out there, hands down. So just think about that and uh, hope it works out for you. So trying to get the perfect air fuel ratio with the carburetor, it can be time consuming, but I promise you it is worthwhile doing because you can get fuel injection performance with a carburetor. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are naysayers, but having a wide band O2 meter really opens the door to a whole new world when it comes to carburetor tuning. Now, you know, once again, I got to give a huge shout out to uh, Jim at Allstate Carburetors because he's been uh, instrumental in getting me into the right direction as far as my air bleeds, uh, starting out and discussing about the, how these annular boosters tend to run rich compared to the down legs. You know, you got to understand that you're changing a lot and you're putting something in a carburetor that never came that way so there's some experimentation that's involved as well but uh, overall I mean I am super happy with the drivability of this thing and you know right now even now we're turning 3600 rpms on the interstate and we are still in the transition slot so that is something to really think about because I mean it's really phenomenal really and you can get really good fuel economy if you take the time to dial in the idle circuit and the transfer slot circuit what I'm going to do is do a quick log here on the interstate I'm just going to do a wide open throttle burst and uh, do a data log on it and see what air fuel ratio looks like. I'm going to start the log now. Carburetor. 